half of British women in particular here, we're talking when we're not even getting on the subject of men, uh, are putting themselves at risk of all sorts of horrible diseases because their uh, waistlines are too big. Let's look at this study by the Nuffield Health uh, Charity. The average waist size for a woman in Britain is 4.9 centimetres bigger than the recommended measurement of 80 centimetres. And 80 centimetres is just 31.4 uh, inches. And there, jumping ahead of ourselves there, uh, if you're in the north of England, you will have a, a pretty big uh, wa waistline in comparison, uh, about 34 inches, 87 centimetres. The smallest in London, the average there is 81.9 centimetres or 32 inches. Uh, over 16% of women were found to be either moderately or morbidly obese, adding to the charity's concern about uh, women's health. Nicole Barbarian is a dietitian and a nutritionist who's here um, talking to me now. Um, because I'm on the telly, I often get picked on for this sort of thing. But listen, I'm not unique out there. I, and, and increasingly, this, this is, you know, the end thing. This, people are getting bigger and bigger. Why are you not talking about men in this study? Why are you particularly concerned about women? Well, from my point of view and from the nation's point of view, men and women, the waist sizes are increasing. So actually, they're both important. And for men, we've got the figures of 94 centimetres. That's 37 inches. Is their watch out figure to Well, I'll watch for. out. If I get bigger than that I will be straight on to you um, straight away but what I want to know is what's the difference between having weight say you know if your woman on your arms or your thighs as opposed to your waist why is it more dangerous if it's if it's on your waist well we're looking at where the fat is and what the fat is so basically what we've always talked about previously is the body mass index that's a measure of your weight relative to your height that's useful for a population study but on an individual basis it doesn't tell us is it muscle tissue or is it fat tissue? Right. That's where the waist circumference comes in because it gives us an idea of, you know, if somebody mm. is a heavier weight, is it muscle? Well, if the waist size is going up, that's not muscle tissue. No. That's, that's where the fat mm. is being deposited. And the thing is, why, well, why is that bad? Um, I can understand it doesn't look good, but what is it actually doing to you? So those higher waist relations and the, the body mass index together, they're giving us an idea of a relation to certain health conditions and we found that as those waist sizes go up we're getting an increase in type 2 diabetes in heart mm. disease factors in strokes in anginas in osteoarthritis it's basically linked to all those increasing well risk we factors. all know that i think we all know that message is what you actually do about it or what you feel you can do about it and um, sucking her tummy in significantly beside you is sarah j <laughs> yeah on, i can see you, you were just sitting there morning, going just you were doing that just, this, uh, I'm quite surprised at this because women are, are much better at men than w in watching what they eat and dieting. So I was quite surprised to see these figures come out. I mean, and the interesting thing is, it's women that have the larger waist sizes that, that's going up more than the men. The it's a lot of it to do with fatty dieting because people say, you know, that can that can actually make you put on warm weight. There's many factors for women. It's a lot harder in some ways to lose weight than men because men have a higher metabolic rate. They've got more muscle tissue. More muscle tissue means that your energy requirements are actually bigger. Just to survive, just to be there, your muscles turning over. So men having more muscle, they can eat more. They've got a higher calorie allowance. Whereas women, so if they unfair. ate the same food as a man, yeah. they would be going over mm. their energy requirements I must have more female genes than male ones, really, <laughs> if, that, if that's what's happening. But look, you see, if you do find yourself in this situation, the thing is, right, we know all the horribleness that it can cause. What can you actually do about it? Because a lot of people will say, it doesn't matter how many times I diet, I yo-yo diet, whatever, it just doesn't work for me. Uh, this woman at the end is very disciplined about her life. She's a, she's a former <laughs> really athlete. Not. No, you are, you are. Compared to normal people, you are very, very disciplined about your life. Uh, have you to be as miserable as Jackie is in life? <laughs> um, to, have a, to have a lovely I'm waist? I'm not miserable. Or, I'm just a bit weight conscious. And when I was a gymnast, they would weigh you all the time and the Bulgarian coaches would go, Ugh, ugly fat, get rid of it. And that's what they said. And you go, oh, OK. So you go on a bit of a diet for a week and lose a few pounds and then the ugly fat would be gone. But there are so many more fat women now around these days than compared to when you know my mum was young you just see so many more of them don't you now there's an interesting point that you picked up there and it's one coming to the action points about what can the public do and that's you mentioned that you were regularly monitored so the first thing is to mm. know where you're at you know some people might not realize that their waist has gone up so measure your waist measure your weight 
monitor yourself and monitor yourself. Don't wait for somebody else to do it. You keep a regular check and then you can do something about it. When you see it's gone up a little bit, then you can take it back. So that regular monitoring is actually key. You don't have to do it every day. We're talking about, you know, every couple of weeks. Yeah. Just check. Um, sort of sticking your fingers in your ears and trying to pretend it's not there isn't really the, the answer. So uh, get a mirror for your house and... Uh, and don't avoid measure. the scales. And, and avoid the scales. And if you're over 30 inches, you're in, you're and, in trouble. And there's many things you can do. Uh, the, the first of all, I really do want to give hope that all these health conditions are reversible. So that's the first oh. thing to look at. All those risks come down as you lose weight. And then the small changes do make a difference. And the sun is shining today as well. She puts us on the good mood to do something about it. I might just put on my shorts and uh, my black socks <laughs> and my trainers and go running. <laughs> and get out and do something today. about it. And failure, always start today, don't start tomorrow. Nicole, thank you very much indeed. And starting today, you've got, we've got a European meeting, the Foreign 